Coming up with the, all those market volatility, where should you consider putting your money? Uh, not, of course, just for the rest of this year, but going into 2019, because some stocks are obviously way oversold. I got some experts here to help us figure all of that out. But first, while Wall Street is worrying about a possible looming recession, American shoppers have had no fears about spending this holiday season. In fact, early data shows holiday retail sales are the strongest that they've been in six years, and even the Trump administration has taken notice. Earlier today, I spoke with White House advisor Kevin Hassett. Take a listen to what he had to say. You know, the economy is doing great, and that's showing up in the Christmas sales, which are going to be about the best we've ever seen. So what's behind all of this? It's a combination. The optimism, though, manifesting into real-life spending. Joining me now is Schaefer Asset Management President and CEO Dan Schaefer, Kandina, Kandina Group President Gary B. Smith, and our very own Christina Parts Neville. It's Gary B., let me start with you. You know, I, it, surveys are one thing, and, I, you know, we go by them, we use them, they help us make decisions. Uh, we had a survey last week in Michigan, Consumer Confidence, blew away Wall Street estimates, much stronger than anticipated. But we are seeing it materialize. We're getting the, these numbers in, and they look phenomenal. What's behind it, you think? Well, you know, I, I always boil it down, Charles, to, uh, you know, I, I think people feel good about the economy, about themselves, based on three pillars. Do they have a job? We've seen low unemployment rate. Are they making money? We've seen wages uh, continue to increase. And then the value of their home. It's only the third leg I'm worried about. The first two are obviously extremely positive. Taking that into a Christmas season, I think you saw the result. You have, uh, you have very good sales. Going out further, you talked earlier about the wealth effect, which contributes uh, uh, applicable directly to their home value and their home sale. Then, I'm get, then I start to get a little bit worried. Speaking of worrying, Dan Schaefer, uh, you've been, you know, cautioning folks on this market. Uh, we've come down hard. This could, we're on the verge, perhaps, of being the worst December uh, since the Great Depression, before the Great Depression, right, or before. 1931. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of it? What does the market, what is, what's beneath all of this? Because the data that seems to be great almost every day, or good, you know, slowing, but, but, but good stuff, is the exact opposite reaction in the stock market. What, what is the market saying? Well, it's got multiple pieces that are the problem. <clears throat> One of them is this political division, which we talked about a long time ago. But right now, the market is now sensing that with the low interest rate environment and the Federal Reserve uh, pumping in money, which they've done for the last eight years, is just not bringing the GDP up. People are not seeing the great increases in their wages. Their, val their, their quality of life is not better. But why and now would the market be reacting? A a a the irony of there is that some of these things, at least on paper, look like they're improving. Oh, they look like they're improving on paper. But if you really look at what's going on, the market, you know, the, the, the amount of debt that's out there globally is out of control. So when I hear these consumer, price, uh, these consumer spending numbers, all they did was add to the debt that's still out there. How are they going to pay this? Next year, they've got increased in insurance premiums with less benefits. Then they're going to get that tax bill that they thought was going to be a lot less, but it's going to be more. Where's this money going to come from to pay down the debt? And that, what I believe, is holding down the global economies, is this, this repaying of interest on debt that takes out of earnings and takes out of people's pockets. That hasn't stopped. And because right. that hasn't stopped, the stock market is beginning to realize that not only the political winds are causing a problem, but that consumers may be on the verge of being tapped out. And, let you know, me, one more point I want to make. One more point. Right. On the sales that came out, if you look at the stores, these major stores have cut prices so dramatically that by natural movement, it will increase sales, but their margins are going to be cut. That's a problem in the retail industry. By the way, third quarter uh, earnings season, that was the story, right? Uh, a lot of misses on revenues. The top line, a lack of pricing power. Uh, Christina, what, what would you, how would you describe the atmosphere down there on the floor? <laughs> it's funny because I had spoke to a few traders that said, I don't know what's going on right now. Why are we seeing everything in the green? Yes, we can allude to the positive summer saying the retail numbers that came out or the fact that uh, not only your interview, but you had Kevin Hassett say that Jay Powell's spot is 100 percent confirmed. He's not going to get fired. So that added some positivity to the market. Uh, some are saying, you know, just it's been oversold territory, especially on Monday. So these are some people trying to snap up some deals at the moment. But really, there's not one particular factor. And I think Dan 
Ryan was spot on when you talk about really the concerns heading into 2019. Retail sales up 5.1% for this holiday season, according to MasterCard. Sounds great, but if you even I went and you look at the stores, most of the stuff has been discounted for quite a while since uh, Black Friday. And then today it's even more so. Some stores at 50% off. So like he said, these margins are a lot lower, and that's a concern going forward. And last but not least, fact set published uh, uh, just numbers and they are saying that for the next set of earnings that are coming out Q4 they expect it to be less than half compared to last year. Real quick Gary B uh, we know there's got to be a reassessment uh, of everything because we won't have the kind of earnings growth that we saw which were mind-boggling in 2018 uh, but isn't that what this part of this process is and if so where do we find equilibrium? Well, you know, it just you just the easiest thing to do is look at the market action. It's unlikely we put in a bottom. Markets just don't go straight down and then straight back up. You know, today say we're up 600. I think we absolutely, at a minimum, have to test the lows uh, from right before Christmas, and then that'll of course take us into 2019 or thereabouts. Then maybe you can make an assessment. Have we put in any right. kind of bottom? I think I would like to see just one of these headwinds, whether it's China, you know, the Fed, uh, you know, uh, stopping something, kind of uh, yeah, a breath of good news. Well, then maybe I'd be a little bit more bullish. Well, the good news, really, honestly, is that I think the worst case scenario for all of them starting to be baked in. So they can only get better. I think they will. Maybe. All right. Gary, where's the Gary B I used to know?